So we have formulas for kind of common situations that keep arising in mathematics and science. And so I've written a couple formulas up here on the board. Uh, D equals RT, that's distance equals rate times time. This is a formula for travel. Uh, this is a perimeter formula for a rectangle. Rectangles often come up, so we have a formula for the perimeter. It says the perimeter equals twice the length plus twice the width. And if we drew a picture of a rectangle there, you would see that two of the lengths and two of the widths add to the distance around the rectangle. Um, formula here for converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Often it comes up that we need to convert either Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit back to Celsius. And so here are just three typical formulas that I've written. Notice all of these formulas, if we were trying to solve for one of these variables in these formulas, we would be solving a literal equation because there's more than one variable in these equations. So let's take a look at this first uh, distance equals rate times time formula and see kind of how we use that thing. So if we were traveling, let's say we're going on a trip and we knew the rate and we knew the time that we were driving. So let's say we are, our rate, we typically drive 70 miles per hour. 70 miles per hour when we're traveling and we know that we're gonna be able to drive for a time of uh, four hours today. We could use this formula, distance equals rate times time, to figure out how far we could drive in four hours driving at 70 miles per hour. So let's see, I write down the formula, distance equals rate times time, and we just plug this information in. So the distance, we don't know the distance, we're trying to find that, but we do know the rate. We know the rate is 70 miles per hour, which means 70 miles per one hour. And I would now multiply that times the time. And since I'm dealing with a fraction here, I'm going to go ahead and write that time as a fraction. It's uh, four hours. So just like when we write any whole number uh, as a fraction, we just put it over one. So all I'm going to do here with the four hours is just put it over one. And so let's take a look at our distance now. So I say, okay, well, the hours are going to divide out. So hours and hours divide out and leave us basically with 70 miles times four. Well, 70 times four is 280. So if I was gonna drive 70 miles per hour for four hours, I could travel then 280 miles in that time. Now this is nice, but this isn't usually the way when we're traveling that we figure stuff out. Usually the way that we travel is we have to go a certain distance we probably are gonna go a certain speed, and usually we need to figure out how much time it's gonna take us to, to travel that distance, okay? So the formula as it's written, D equals RT, is not really gonna help us, because what's gonna happen, let's say we had to go 500 miles, and we know that we're gonna drive, let's say, you know, with stops and stuff, we're maybe gonna average 60 miles per hour, so we're going to go 60 miles per hour. And then usually what we're trying to figure out is the time then, kind of like, what's the time going to be? And so one way to do this is every time we wanted to ask this question, we could enter the information as this formula is written, and then go ahead and solve this formula for time, divide both sides by 60, and figure out what our time is. However, since we're using this formula always kind of this way where we're trying to figure out the time it's going to take us to go on this trip. Why don't we just take this equation and manipulate that thing a little bit so that it's solved for time? So let's come over here and take a look at that. So I have this equation, distance equals rate times time. What I'd like to do is solve this for time. Well, all I have to do to solve for time is just undo this multiplication by r. Well, to undo that, we would do the same thing as if we had a number there. If I was trying to get rid of a number that was multiplied by t, to solve for time, all I had to do is divide by this r. So I would divide this right side by r, and just like with numbers, if I divide the right side by r, I'm going to divide the left side by r. So notice my r's divide out over here, and I've essentially now solved a literal equation for time. So I have time is equal to the distance divided by the rate. That is a much handier form if we're talking about traveling in the car trying to go to some destination. Because we usually know the distance, we usually know how fast we're going to drive, and we're always kind of wondering about the time. So now what I could do is plug this information over here every time I had, every time I was going to go on a trip, I could take this information and just plug it in this equation that's solved for time. 
And that's why we solve literal equations for certain variables. We kind of manipulate them in math and science the way that we need them or the way that we're going to use them. So let's take a look now at another literal equation. Here I have the equation for, or formula for perimeter. Okay? And what I'm asking for is to solve this equation for L. So what we're trying to do is isolate L or get that L all alone. So to solve this literal equation, I'm going to do the same thing that I would with numbers. So notice I have addition over here that's kind of keeping L from being all alone, and I also have multiplication. Well, I want to undo or get rid of the addition first. So I'm going to get rid of that 2W off this side as my first step. It's so the way I'm going to do that is just subtract 2W. Just the same way I would if I was subtracting 2 from each side. Except with literal equations, I think it's actually easier because we don't have to worry about subtracting 2W from P. Normally with numbers, we have to go make some calculations here. With variables, all I have to do is write, oh, this is P minus 2W on that side. And notice now I'm getting the right side simpler, and I'm getting closer to getting L all alone. So here I sit, L's almost all alone. The only thing I have left to get rid of is this multiplication of 2. Well, to get rid of the multiplication of 2, I would divide by 2. So I'm going to divide the right side by 2, and I'm going to do the same thing to the left side. But I need to make sure here that I divide everything on the left side by 2. So I'm just going to use a big fraction bar here and divide that by 2. Now over on the right side, my 2's divide out. I'm left with L. It's all alone. And on the left side, I have this very strange looking group of letters and numbers. But it actually would be pretty simple now if I had some formula or some reason where I was trying to figure out the length of a rectangle all the time given the perimeter and the width. All I would have to do now is plug in the perimeter and the width do some, multi do, so, do some multiplication, subtract it, and then divide by 2, and it would give me the length in this particular rectangle. So I think one of the keys to solving literal equations is seeing the connection between solving equations with numbers, and then kind of translating that over to solving these literal equations where we don't have a lot of numbers and we have a lot of variables. So what I'm starting with here, this is the formula that converts uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. This is the formula we would use if we knew the Celsius and we were trying to convert it to Fahrenheit. And let's say we wanted to change this a little bit so that the formula is set up for solving for Celsius given a Fahrenheit. Right now, if we were given a Fahrenheit and we had to figure out the Celsius, we'd have to do a bunch of math. We'd have to subtract 32 and invert and multiply by this fraction and stuff like that to kind of solve. So what we want to do now is solve this equation for C. If we can solve this for Celsius, then we'd have a nice formula for converting Fahrenheit back into Celsius. Before we do that, though, let's kind of look at what that transition would be with numbers, because it's easy for us to see with numbers how to solve this one, and then we'll translate that over to this literal equation. So I, I put some numbers in. I put 100 in for the Fahrenheit, and well, that's the only number I put in there. But anyways, when we put that number in there, now we get it down to one variable, something that we're comfortable with. Okay, so let's take a look. If I was trying to solve this equation for C, we would say, well, okay, there's a fraction in here, this 9 fifths. Let's get rid of the fraction first. And if you watch the video on LCD method, you'd be pretty comfortable now saying, well, our only denominator is 5. Let's go ahead and multiply everything here by 5. So I would just go ahead and multiply both sides by 5. And I'll just write that as one big multiplication problem. On the left side, I multiply by 5. I get 500. Now when I multiply by 5 over 1 here, it's going to divide out my denominators. That's why I'm multiplying by 5. It'll leave me with just 9c. And then 5 times 32 is uh, 160. Okay, so that would be my first step, is to multiply by 5 to clear out the fractions. Now I've just got two steps left to kind of get C all along. So then I would subtract 160, subtract 160, and let's see, I have 9C is equal to 500 minus 160. That would give me 340. And then the last step would be to divide by 9, divide by 9, and whatever that division is, that's what we get for our answer there. But this process now, you could translate this exact same process now to solve this literal equation. Same exact steps. So go ahead now and pause your video player and solve this literal equation for C. Okay? So let's take a look. First thing I did is clear the fraction out. So that's what I'm going to do over here. I multiply by 5. And so 5 times f is just going to give me 5f. The 5s are going to divide out here. 
leaving me with 9c. And again, 5 times 32 is 160. Now just a couple steps to get c all along. I would subtract 160 from each side. On the right side, now I'm left with just 9c. On the left side, I don't have to worry about doing the subtraction. I just write 5f minus 160. One last step now to solve for c. I need to undo this multiplication by 9, so I divide by 9. And over here on the left side, I want to make sure I divide everything by 9. And again, it's nice. I don't have to do any computation. Now I have c. I've solved for c, Celsius, is equal to this. 5f minus 160 over 9. And this is actually the formula that we use for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. If we plug a value in for the Fahrenheit, we multiply it by 5, minus 160, divide by 9, that would tell us the Celsius, the, the temperature in Celsius. Okay? So you can see the key is making the connection between numbers and the literal equation. Okay, let's go ahead and try one last literal equation here. Go ahead and pause your video player and solve this literal, equa literal equation for H. So we're trying to isolate and get H all along. Um, if you're kind of struggling a little bit, think about having a number out in front here and then having this just be a regular number. You know, maybe like instead of in place of this 2 pi r squared, kind of pretend that whole thing was maybe like the number 3. And then whatever process you would use if that was the number 3 to solve for H here, go ahead and use that same process now with all of these variables in there. Okay, let's take a look. We're trying to get this h all along. And so it looks like I have a bunch of multiplication I'm going to have to get rid of here. And also this addition. And so we always undo or get rid of addition first. So the first thing I'm going to do is just subtract all of this stuff away. So I would subtract 2 pi r squared. That would make that go away. Now on this side I'll have to do the same thing. Minus 2 pi r squared. Which looks kind of messy, but we don't have to do any sort of computation here, we're just going to write s minus 2 pi r squared. Now on the right side, I'm left with 2 pi r h. Okay, And so now I'm trying to get h all alone, so I just have to get rid of the multiplication by all of this stuff. Well, I can get rid of all of that stuff in one shot. I'm just going to divide by all of that stuff. I want this, this, and this to go away. So since it's all multiplication, I'm just going to divide by it, those three things. And now on the other side, i got to make sure I divide everything on that side by that. So 2 pi r. And so now look, h, this is all going to divide out nicely and leave us with h on the right side. I've isolated for h, so now I've solved for h. And then on the left side, I'm left with this messy stuff. But that is OK. Now, we're done right here. But sometimes students get a little bit confused and think that we should divide this 2 pi r out with this 2 pi r. In order to simplify something like this, that, that 2 pi r would have to be a factor of both this term in the bottom and the two terms in the top. So in order for something to divide out, it has to be a common factor of all three of the terms. It's a common factor here and here, but not with the s. So this is as simple as we could make that statement for our solution.